Welcome to today's online service with New Life Church. We're particularly pleased to welcome those who are with us for the first time and trust that you will all be blessed as we meet together virtually during these difficult times. We pray that each one of us will be touched at our point of need today through the worship, the Word of God and communion. As we celebrate fathers today and their roles in our lives, we pray that you'll appreciate the Father heart of God in a new and deeper way. As we worship, we'll be reminded that we have traded our sorrows. We've let them go. As fathers and parents, we sometimes make decisions that later we regret, but it is great to know that we do not have to retain that burden of regret. Our Heavenly Father always welcomes us into his house. Even if we have messed up, his arms are open wide. What a joy to know that we are no longer enslaved, that he has paid the price for us at Calvary, so we have no chains or shackles that can hold us to the past. Psalm 68 verse 5 says, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. It reminds us that even if we have no earthly father because he's not involved with us or he has passed away, God can be that father figure in our lives if we allow him to lead, guide, advise, protect and support us whenever we need that help, day or night, summer or winter, in sickness or in health. As Pastor Victor continues the series on the family, verse 6 of Psalm 68 reminds us that God sets the lonely in families, so we never need to be alone. Join with us as we worship our loving Heavenly Father today. Come on church, let's all sing together. I'm trading my sorrows And I'm trading my sorrows And I'm trading my shit And I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord And I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my pain And I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord We say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen I'm trading my sorrows And I'm trading my shame And I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord And I'm trading my sickness And I'm trading my pain Oh, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Yes, yes, Lord We say yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, yes, Lord Amen We sing yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, that his joy is going to be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes in the morning. Come on, church, let's yeah. say. And I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading my shame. Oh, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We say yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, church, give him praise today. Say, yes, Lord, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sickness. I'm laying it all down for the joy of the Lord. Amen, church. The word of the Lord says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So let's experience his joy today as we celebrate Father's Day. We're celebrating the love of our Heavenly Father. Amen. Isn't he good to us? Happy Father's Day again to all our wonderful dads out there. And what a great opportunity we have together as a church in this series, We Are Family, to celebrate our dads, but worship our Heavenly Father. Come on, He's worthy of worship. He's so good. He's so faithful. So let's celebrate this morning in the Father's house. And I want to teach you this new song. It's called The Father's House. And it talks about how each one of us is welcome in the Father's house. There's no condemnation. It's a place where we can come and just lay our burdens down. We can rest. We can enjoy His presence. And the prodigals can come home. Amen. We belong in the Father's house. So let's sing together, the Father's house. just begun Failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Oh, failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Ooh Lay your burdens down Ooh You're in the father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't well Come anymore Ooh You're in the Father's house Yeah Come on church, let's sing together I was not the end game The journey's where you are You never want it perfect You just want it and the story isn't over If the story isn't good Failures never find Oh, when the Father's in the room Oh, failures never find Oh, when the Father's in the room Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, you're in the Father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house So thankful that we're in the Father's house today Oh, prodigals come home The helpless find home is on the move when the father's in the room prison doors fling wide the dead come to life love is on the move when the father's in the room miracles take place the cynical find faith 
Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Old Jericho was a quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Oh, love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house We belong to the Father In the Father's house Check your shame at the door it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house Come on, let's sing that together Ooh, Lay your burdens down Ooh, In the Father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore Lay your burdens down Lay your burdens down Yes, church Lay your burdens down In the Father's house Oh, we rest in your house, Lord We rest in your presence, Lord Amen, amen What a powerful declaration That we can come into the Father's house We can come into his presence boldly with confidence Shame cannot hold us back the enemy cannot lie to us and condemn us. Because his word says in Romans chapter 8 that now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Amen. So as we continue to worship the Lord, I just want to read a passage of scripture from Matthew chapter 11. And this is what the Lord is saying to us today, I believe. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Amen. I just want to encourage everyone today, especially our dads, as we spend this time in worship, I want you to just take, see your burdens and put them on Jesus. Put them on the Father and say, Lord, I cast every care, every burden, every anxiety. I take your yoke, which is easy, your burden, which is light, in exchange for you taking all my heaviness. Come on, this morning, let's just put all our sorrow, all our shame, all our pain, all our sickness upon the Father, because He's willing to take it. He's such a good Father. We lay your burdens down. You're in the Father's house Check your shame at the door It ain't welcome anymore You're in the Father's house so Lord, we cast every burden on you We take delight in you, Lord My good, good Father Oh, we worship you, Lord. There's no fear in love, because perfect love is cast out all fear. In the Father's house. You are 
unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone let's sing that again you unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone let's sing no longer slaves i'm no longer a slave to fear for i am a child of god and i'm no longer a slave to fear for i am a child of god from my mother's womb from my mother's womb you have chosen me your love has called my name yes i've been born again and i've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins and i'm no longer a slave fear for I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear for I am a child of God Yes, I am a child And I am surrounded By the arms of the Father And I am surrounded By songs of deliverance We've been liberated from our bondage Where the sons and the daughters So let us sing our freedom Lift your voice and sing You split the sea So I could walk Right through it You drowned my fears In perfect love You rescued me So I will stand And sing I am A child of God Come on let's lift our hands and sing you split the sea so I could walk right through it and My fears are drowned in perfect love Yes, you did, Lord You rescued me so I will stand and sing I am a child of God Yes, I am a child of God Yes, I am a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am 
a child of God And I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God Yes, I am a child of God I'm a child of God For I am a child of God You split the sea so I could walk right through it My fears are drowned in perfect You rescued me so I would stand and say, I am a child of God. Yes, I'm your child, Lord. You are my father. I am yours. I belong to you, Lord, yeah. Nothing can separate me from your love, Lord. I am a child of God. I am your child, oh God. I am a child of God. As we come to the communion table today, I want to share that communion is a declaration of our faith. You know, when Jesus instituted communion uh, the day before he was crucified, uh, it was a powerful declaration of our faith. So, you know, when we break bread and when we partake of it, we declare that we recognize that Jesus died for us and broke his body. And when we partake of it, we're declaring to every cell in our body, every organ in our body, that we have been healed by the stripes of Jesus. So today, as you take bread, as you take the broken body of Jesus, you know, believe that as you partake of it and you take it, that this body is declaring to every cell of your body, every organ of your body that needs healing, that you have been healed. It's a declaration of faith. Uh, similarly, when we partake of the blood of Jesus, it's a declaration to everybody that we are under the new covenant and we are part of a new covenant, a better covenant that Jesus God for us as when he died on the cross so when as you partake believe it's a declaration that we are born again believers in the new covenant and now we we'll move on to the main message which Pastor Victor will be delivering as it is Father's Day on Fathers so we would like to welcome Pastor Victor as he shares the message. I want to wish everyone today a very happy Father's Day to all of you watching online, New Life Church, Gurgaon members, as well as others who are visiting. We just want to greet and stand with every dad and say, you guys are amazing. You're wonderful. We've been in a series called We Are Family. And just because we are doing this today, uh, talking about men, talking about fathers on Father's Day and the third in the series, doesn't mean that uh, you men, us men are not important. We are really important in the body of Christ. In fact, men are the prototype of God's creation of human beings. The first being he created, human being, was a man. And you are very, very important. Today I want to talk about uh, making right choices. Amen. 
making right choices. Have you ever wondered, you know, how your life would be, how my life would be if we had not made the choices we had made? We want to see today as we make the right choices, it's going to lead us and determine the voice that we have. Our choice determines our voice. You know, one of the most important choices that I made in my life was uh, after I finished my studies in the United States and I was wondering what to do, I had some offers to continue in the US and my vision initially was to make it big in the land of opportunity and stay on. But then I felt God saying, no, go back to your country and preach the gospel. Go back to your country and share the good news with people who've never heard. And so I was really caught in a very difficult choice. My parents were saying, stay in the United States and get a green card. But I felt God saying, go back to India. And I was confused and I sought the Lord, a very important choice. And finally, I'm glad that I made that choice to burn the bridges and come back to India and to follow the Lord and to seek God and to serve Him. Amen. That choice that I made almost 35 years ago has determines today the voice that I have the voice that I am speaking to you, the voice and the platform that God has given me to touch many lives and change many destinies. I'm so glad for that choice. Perhaps we can all uh, look at and relate to choices that we've made in life that have brought us to where we are. Good choices and sometimes bad choices, choices that we wish we had never made and have are affecting us perhaps even today. So make the right choice. That's my message to us fathers and men today for our choices determine our voice. You know, I want to share today from the Bible of a great man of God, a great hero. His name is Joshua in the Old Testament. And at age 110, after making choices for 70 years of his life, making good choices, he comes to this point to have a voice and to be able to speak with confidence. And I want to uh, read to us a verse from the Bible, which is his farewell. It, it is his last speech. It's his voice to the people. And I want us to see today how the choices that Joshua made determined his voice determined his message. He, he says in the book of Joshua, chapter 24 and verse 15, he says, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, he's speaking to the people. This is his farewell speech. He's 110. He's going to die a little while after this. He says, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. He says, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What an amazing farewell speech. And three things I want us to see today about your voice. You know, number one, it's your voice, my voice to the people. Joshua is able to address the people. You know, he's developed his pulpit, so to speak, over 70 years from age 40 to now age 110 of faithfully making good choices. Choices to serve God, choices to serve the people, choices when it was difficult, when the tens out of 12 spies were saying, no, we can't take this land. Joshua made a choice to declare we can, are well able to take it. He stood with Caleb and he made that determination. Choices that he made to serve Moses faithfully, waiting on that mountain while Moses was communing with God, serving the people, fighting their battles, 
taking over from Moses, the tremendous great leader, when he passed away, Joshua rises to the occasion. He made so many good choices and now he says, I'm giving you a choice. And I believe all of us have choices today. He said, you can serve one of these three gods. You can serve Jehovah. You can serve the Lord. The one that is covenanted to us. The one who has chosen us, who has called us by his name, who has declared that we are his people, his chosen people. Or you can serve your ancestral gods, the gods that our father Abraham served beyond the Euphrates. Abraham was an idol worshipper, but when God called him, he left his gods and he left Ur of the Chaldees and he went to the promised land and he served Jehovah. So the choice was they could go back and serve those ancestral gods and third, or you could serve the local gods, the gods around you, the gods of the Amorites, the gods that were so prevalent all around them. And Joshua is imploring them to choose, choose wisely. And the choice remains for all of us today as believers and men in particular, you know, which God are you going to serve? Are you going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you going to serve the gods of your ancestors, the gods of your past, the background from which you came? Or are you going to serve the gods that are all around us? The gods of materialism, the gods of success, the gods of pleasure, the gods of money, the gods of fame, the gods of beauty. Which God are you going to serve? It's a choice. You know, God gives us a choice today and all of us watching, if you've never made a choice for the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to implore you like Joshua is doing. Will you serve the Lord? Will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you take Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Because Jesus says, whoever believes in me will have eternal life. Whoever believes in me will not perish. You know, what do you have to lose except for your sins? You lose an eternity away from God and you will gain a relationship and an eternity with God. God gives us a choice. In fact, you know, deny, denying choice is control. And fathers, I want to encourage us today that even in our families, you know, we've got to give people choice, right? If we don't give people choice, that is controlling, that is Jezebelic, that is trying to take away from people what God has given them. We find in the Bible, even the great prophet Elijah, when he's on Mount Carmel and he's asking the people of Israel to decide, he uh, draws them together and he, he tells them, how long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. So there is a choice. Even in the parable of the prodigal son, Jesus tells the story of a man who had two sons and the younger son comes to the father and says, give me my share of the estate. And he takes his inheritance and he goes off and he squanders it. The father allowed him to have choice. And I believe as good fathers, we also have to give our family members, our wives, our children, choice. We can't badger them, control them or force them into a way, but we've got to teach them choices and the consequences of their choices. You know, I remember this movie Spider-Man where uh, the older uh, parent, the father is telling uh, his foster son, uh, Peter Parker, he is telling him that with great power comes great responsibility. You know, choice is tremendously powerful. It determines our destiny. And, but we need to use that choice with responsibility. And the choices we make today are going to determine our eternity. Fathers, men and women, everyone, I want to challenge us. Choose wisely. Jesus said, if you want to follow after me, you must take up your cross daily. In other words, you need to choose daily.
to say no to yourself and to say yes to me. Amen. Fathers, would you uh, make that the right choice today that you be a voice to the community all around you when they see that you are a person of resolute choice. You have made that choice for Jesus. You have made that choice to be a man of God. You made the choices daily about following God. Second, we see about Joshua that he had a voice to his family. He says, as for me and my household, you know, today we live in such a pluralistic society and often in our families, we have many individuals and they have this th thinking and that thinking and it is their choice. But Joshua had come to that place where he could be a spokesman for his family. Many of us men are very quiet and often it's just our wives who speak. But Joshua was able to speak for his family and today even if you're a quiet person your lifestyle will speak often the most powerful messages are the non-verbal ones and you know we need to come to that place through daily choices where we can have a voice for the family the family recognizes that we are good fathers we are fathers and husbands who lay down our lives for our wives and for our children we love as Christ loved the church. Last Sunday, Pastor Esther you know, spoke about wives and women. And one of the highlight points was you know, about wives submitting to their husbands and really about respect. And she shared a lot of scriptures from Ephesians 5. I want to just briefly touch on the scriptures she didn't talk about and that addresses you and me. Uh, men and fathers talks about Ephesians 5 verses 25, 28 and 33. It says, Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Verse 28, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Verse 33, however, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. You know, Paul is telling us uh, husbands and fathers that we need to love how? Love as Christ loved, love our families like we love our own bodies and to love our families the way we love ourselves. You know, even God recognizes the power of the father. When God was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, it, in Genesis chapter 18 and verses 17 to 19, it's almost like God is conscience stricken. I say almost like. It's almost like he said, oh, oh, what am I doing here? I'm doing something without sharing it with my good friend Abraham. And it says that the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing that which I am about to do? Seeing that Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Verse 19, For I, I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they will keep the way of the Lord and do, to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring about Abraham that which he has spoken of him. You know, God realized that Abraham, as a father, would direct his household. Abraham would make good choices. Abraham, therefore, needed to you know, be shared with what God was about to do. That Abraham, being his God's covenanted person and a tremendous family person, a man who was going to direct his household, God says, I better share with him. Do you understand the importance of teaching your household about building a pulpit at home, about serving your family, where God says that now you're my friend, you are close to me, and I must share with you what I'm about to do. That's amazingly powerful. You know, Joshua 
had a voice for the, to the people. He had a voice for his household, his family. And finally, we see Joshua has a voice of direction. He says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And God wants us men to have clear direction. He has clearly chosen. He has set his course. He has set his face like flint in the direction of serving God. And he says, this is what we have determined to do. It's like the Apostle Paul saying, confidently saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Joshua is telling the people look, now, look, this is my example. Me, I and my household, we are serving the Lord. We have determined to put our faith in Jehovah. We will obey him. We say no to the gods of the Amorites all around. We say no to the gods of our ancestors. And we only say yes to Jehovah. The writer of the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews 13 and verse 7, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their life and imitate their faith. Fathers, men, we should have people all around us who want to mimic, imitate, act out what we are doing. And that comes when we make right choices. Joshua made the choice to speak forth clearly the direction and to give vision to others. His voice was powerful. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision. You know, you and I, fathers, husbands, men, we've got to give people vision. We are living in a world where people have no vision. In very difficult times where they don't know what's going to happen. But when you and I say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. When we declare with our lives, and with our word that Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life and everyone can come to the Father through him. When we declare that, when we proclaim that vision, then people begin to hear we have a voice for direction. So fathers, what are we going to do this Father's Day? Are we just going to uh, enjoy being wished Happy Father's Day and all the love and, and the blessing that we receive from our family. But I want to challenge us. You may be thinking, oh, I just made too many wrong decisions. I don't think I can ever change. But I want to challenge you that you can decide today to make right choices, to choose Jesus daily. And we're going to pray in a little while that God will give us the grace to make daily right choices. Amen. God is a good God. He loves us. He's called us. He has chosen us. He made us men first. And he has appointed us to be heads in our families. And he's called us to be witnesses to all people. Witnesses in our households and to our community, in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth that our lives would declare the good news. So even if we fall today, I want to encourage us that we can be a voice for our community. By making right choices, we can be a voice for our family and we can be a voice for right direction. Knowing that our choices are going to give us our voice. So men, will we be challenged today? Can we just encourage one another? to say that we can be men who make daily right choices. We say no to our flesh. We say no to the world. We say no to the things that, are, that our eyes are drawn to. To say no to the gods of our ancestors and say yes to Jesus. Amen. Our choices will determine the voice that we have. 
And I want to ask us today, what if all of us dads in our church and all of us who are hearing today, if all of us decide that we are going to make these right choices, these daily choices, the choices of following the Lord, the choices of having a relationship with God, the choices of knowing His Word and obeying and following Him. What if we all do that? Can you imagine the respect and the honor like the early church had where they were held in high honor and everyone respected them? Why? They were making choices for God and they were living as powerful witnesses I want us to think that even in our country, India, that if us men, if we rise up and fathers to be men who make the right choices, our nation will be different. People will stand up and say, who are these people? Who are these men whose families are so wonderfully taken care of, who love so sacrificially and who demonstrate who God really is? I want to just pray today for all of us dads. Uh, we're having a wonderful time of worship, a wonderful time of celebration. But I want to make a special prayer today for dads, for fathers, for future dads. Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, I thank you for each father who's listening. I thank you for each man today, oh God, whom you have called and you have chosen as the prototype, as the first of your human creation as the head of your households. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for a special unction today, a special anointing to be leaders, to make the right choices, to be a voice to the community, to speak up for their families and to have clear direction. Would you bless them, Father? I pray for those who are struggling today, maybe under a burden of so many bad choices, God, I thank you that today is a new day. And today, as they hear your voice, they can rise up and say, God, with your help, I can start beginning to make right choices. And God, that you give me a voice that I will be able to declare and be able to show people the way, the direction, and to lead my family. Would you bless each father, bless each family. Father, bless our community and bless our nation and the entire world to Christian men rising up as fathers and godly men in our generation. Thank you for your people, O oh God, and bless each one as we celebrate this happy Father's Day. God bless you. He doesn't fight crime or wear a cape He doesn't read minds or levitate But every time my world needs saving He's my Superman Some folks don't believe in heroes Cause they haven't met my dad Loves his workshop in rock and roll. He's got a hot rod and a heart of gold. And you could say he's a man of few words, but he talks a lot within. And even though I'm a little taller, I still look up to him. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He taught me to try. And to fight and to dream When he looks in my eyes I hope he can see That my dad's a hero to me
Me and my dad like the same food. We both like playing football together. I like uh, fried chicken. He also likes fried chicken only. We love to play football together. We both like cricket. We play badminton. Talking. Playing board games and online games. I enjoy playing board games and watching movies with him. Singing with him, even though we both always mess up the lyrics of the songs. Cooking with him and practicing my violin in front of him. He sings really nicely. Cooking. Drawing. He's very good at art. To have the whole family together. Gardening. When me and my brother plays well together. Movies. He likes to play football. He does a lot of sports. Exploring things. That he is very encouraging. His jokes. Out of the three brothers, he like supports me the most of the time. His jokes. Singing. He is a very honest and kind person. He plays with me in the free time. He makes me sleep. That he's very patient. He is very hardworking. He always plays with me. That he always makes. Biryani when I ask him. He always tries to like do something that we will like. He always protects me from mom's scolding. Whatever I ask, uh, he gives me. He works very hard. That he's the best. He's the awesome. I love you. Daddy, thank for everything you do for us and Father's Day. I love you. I love you, Dad. I love him a lot. So I love him a lot and Happy Father's Day. Thank you that you are giving me so much things and I love you. Happy Father's Day. Have a good day. He is the best dad in the world that anyone could ever have. Dad, I love you and thank you for everything you have done for us. You're my hero, Dad, and I love you so much. I love him very, very much. Daddy, thank you for everything, and I love you. I love him very much. Dad, I love him. I always look up to you. I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. I love my dad a lot. I love to hug him. Thank you for everything. He's a very good parent, and I love him a lot. I thank my dad. I love I love him very much. Thank you for making biryani all the time and I love you. Happy Father's Day. Good morning church and many blessings to all the fathers on this special occasion today. And I hope you were all blessed by our service today. As we sow into the kingdom of God, I just want to encourage you with one word today, and that word is give. You know, in the word it says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And you know, in John 3 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And I believe God gave the best for us, he gave Jesus for us. So as we give into the kingdom of God today, let's give our best. And you will see a QR code which will appear on the screen. You can scan it to give your tithes and offerings. I'm sure you are blessed by our new sermon series called We Are Family. And I truly believe that we as a church, we are a family. And all of us family members, we come together and we meet throughout the week as well through our life groups. And these life groups, they're happening on Zoom calls. And, you know, I just want to share a little experience from last week. I was so overwhelmed by each and every member of our life group as we, you know, joined together and two of my relatives, they were not feeling well, but they all came together on a short notice. They all prayed for them and they are doing much better now. So I just want to, you know, tell you that people in life group, they are really like warriors who will stand with you through every situation and they will pray for you. 
And not just that, we learn so much from the word of God as well from our life groups. So if you're not a part of a life group, I would encourage you to join one and you can get in touch with us. You can leave a comment down below and we will get you connected. How many of you enjoyed the video by our kids today? Well, I'm sure you know they also enjoyed making those videos for their ads. All of these kids, they are a part of our kids life ministry. And you know, they get together, they enjoy a lot. They learn from the word of God. And you know, if you have a kid who is between the ages of four to 12, and they are not a part of our kids life program, I would encourage you to get them involved. And we also have a teens ministry, which is called Teens Life. And you know, teens from the ages of 13 to 19 get together and they learn from the word of God as well. If you would like to get your teen involved into the ministry, you can get in touch with us. How many of you miss when we used to have fellowship outside the church after the service? You know, I personally miss it myself. And you know what, we can still do it. And you know, we've been having this after service, you know, Zoom fellowship from the last two weeks and it's been amazing. And if you wanna catch up or you wanna get prayer done for yourself, Please join us after this service video ends. You will see a QR code that will appear on the screen through which you can join our Zoom call and you will also get a link for it. So we'll see you all there. Have a good week ahead.